Good morning, good afternoon, good night. I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. Um, I wanted to do a video on intersectionality. It's a new word for me. I only discovered it in an email today and I kind of wanted to know more about it. I like new words. Um, but what it is, it's a word um, coined by Kimberly Crenshaw, I understand. She's a black American. And what she says is that you can be an individual uh, facing discrimination as a black woman. But what about if you were a black woman? Black, okay. What about if you were black, female, disabled, a lesbian? Um, what other characteristic is there? Um, yeah, I think those are the main one. Oh, and old. One person can actually have all of those facets. And can you imagine how, if you're being discriminated on all of those levels, how that could make that individual feel? So she's... She says that is about all the layers that a person will have and how we need to break down the layers in order to understand the person. And so she calls it intersectionality. Now, what I was thinking more of, because I've talked about this quite a lot in previous videos, I thought about a word called multisectionality, which is a more holistic view, because what I'm thinking is, okay, I'm black, I'm female, I'm a lesbian, I'm disabled, um, I can't remember all of them, and I'm old. And I've um, been raised in um, a care home, you've been, um, been raised in a care home, you've had adverse childhood experiences, you have... Um, what other things could have happened to you? Well, put it this way. You could have had a lot of things happen. I'm going to read them out later because I typed them up. But you could have had all of these things happen that affects you as an adult. So it's, And it does cause you cumulatively to be discriminated against because it affects your behaviour. Now, somebody who's had a hard um, upbringing might be forgiven for being cynical, um, untrusting, um, angry, frustrated, um, those kind of things, if you understand the layers of that person's upbringing. And that's why I'm calling it multisectional thinking, because there are so many layers to people. When people look at somebody, they just see a person. Somebody looking at me will just see a black woman. And they will see a black woman. They won't know anything about my sexual identity. They won't really know my age because I don't look my age. They won't know my religion. They, they won't necessarily know if I've got any disabilities. But what they will know is that I'm a black female. And based on that, they can discriminate against me if they are racist. And in the workplace, they could discriminate against me because I'm a woman but they're not necessarily going to know all those other things that could also disadvantage the individual. I'm using myself just to not show shed any light on anyone else. So this is what Kimberly Crenshaw is talking about. And so I'm going to read um, the notes that I took from the piece of paper, well, the email that I got. So intersect. I hope I explained that okay in a way that you understood. So intersectionality is a way of understanding social relations by examining intersecting forms of discrimination. Kimberly Crenshaw came up with the idea, and like I said, she's a black American, who claims that discrimination is compounded by layers. Ageism, racism, sexism might be present at the same time in a person's life. For example, a black elderly lesbian. And breaking down how each facet adversely impacts the individual is important. Not too different from the experiences we have, 
that are compounded and affect our current lives regardless of race and colour. People tend to think of one facet of an individual when tackling discrimination, but people are complicated and multifaceted. So, professionals are trying to ensure the work they undertake is underpinned by intersectional thinking so professionals now want to think about all the different layers of an individual when they're interacting with them. This means acknowledging, exploring and trying to understand all the layers of an individual and how all aspects of a person's identity impacts on their daily lived experience. And like I said, that's racial identity, sexuality, gender, disability, nationality and age. So, when I'm thinking about multi-sectionality, I'm thinking about young people, upbringings and experiences and how they add additional levels or additional layers. Because, okay, the intersectionality is one thing, but if you really want to understand an individual, you need a holistic, and a holistic understanding of that individual. So I've listed a few things why um, I think it should be multi-sectionality anyway. So were they able to trust their parents and carers? I've done it in the wrong order. Sorry. Um, when society looks at a person, they tend to look about one aspect of that person, i.e. is she black, is she white, is she a woman, is she a man, is she a black woman, is she a black man, is he a black man, is he a brown man, that kind of thing. But not the layers behind that, the individual. And I don't think a lot of people care. I mean, would a racist really care um, whether I had adverse childhood experiences, for example? whether I was bullied at school, you know. They wouldn't care. they just see a black person, woman, and, you know, she belongs in the rubbish heap. Intersectional thinking, however, helps us consider the many layers of a person. So an interested person would not only see me as a black woman, but they'd be interested to know Hmm. Where is she? Which part of the world is she from? You know, is she willing to share more about herself so I can understand her? Some people don't want to share information, but it's out there to be, it's for those people to make that connection. And I think when you're dealing with the young people, they're more open than the older people. So, um, intersectional things thinking helps us consider the many layers of a person, but it's focused on discrimination. And it will help. And when you think about whether it's intersectional thinking or multi-sectional thinking, it helps combat the stereotypes, doesn't it? You know, this mindset that people have, that people are one thing. Like when the police, they think that people with dark clothes are criminals or you know people with black skin are criminals you know they have this or certain types of people are illegal immigrants and they have a one-dimensional way of thinking so what have I got here we want to do away with mono thinking, so black and white thinking. You know, that, that it's either this way or that way. There's no in between. Many people only see colour, but they do not see the different layers of a human being. If they are black, for example, are they black Africans? Are they black Americans? Are they black Latin and um, Latin Caribbeans? Are they black Asians? Or Latin Americans, I should have said. What kind of black people are they? They're not all the same. They have different lived experiences depending on what part of the world they are from or what part of the world they are born. Not because they're black, they are the same. 
So that's even another layer. Um, were they raised with two parents, one parent, carers, guardians? Were they adopted? That's another layer. Were they raised in the family home, a boarding school, a foster home, a relative's home? Another layer. Were they treated well, poorly? Did they suffer childhood experiences, adverse childhood experiences? Were their parents loving or were they narcissistic and controlling? Because what this does is it affects the individual's behaviour and it can also cause you to discriminate against them because of their behaviour. When the police stop a boy or a girl, they usually end up treating them in a way based on their behaviour. If you don't know nothing about their background, how can you understand that individual? If you don't know that child that you've just picked up was raped, you know, 10 times and was um, beaten up and bullied and uncared for and was in a foster home, you're not going to understand that child's behaviour. But it's what compounds who they are today and, it what, and it's what causes them to be discriminated against or what might cause them to be discriminated against. So um, did they receive love? Were they nurtured? Were their needs met or were they ignored, abused and intimidated? Did they experience a consistent relying upbringing, a reliable upbringing or was it unstable and unpredictable? Were they able to trust their parents, their carers, or were they betrayed by them? Were they tricked and deceived by their parents or carers? It makes a difference on how they perceive others as adults. They won't trust people as adults if they were tricked or deceived, you know, as children or young people. What is their sexual identity? What are their views? What are their views on religion, politics, race? for example, getting to know the different layers. And like I said, not everybody's open to share, but it is a way to understanding. Intersectional thinking is too limiting and it's only the tip of the iceberg. Multisectional thinking gives a holistic view of the person, not only in health terms, but in an overall understanding and acceptance of the individual. Underneath the colour are all of these mechanisms if we apply intersectionality to our thinking, according to Kimberly Crenshaw, we will understand people better. And of course, it will help us to react to them differently. If you understand a person's background, you respond to them in a different way. The world would be a far healthier and better place. And so I think she's really touched on something there that a lot of us have taken for granted. I don't think... And none of us have thought, hmm, I'm black. Oh, and I'm also female. And I'm also disabled. And I'm also old. And I'm also a lesbian. And you've got all of these people coming at you with their prejudices on each layer that you possess. So it is a way of thinking that allows us to understand how aspects of personals, persons' personal, social and political identities combine to create different modes of both discrimination and privilege. And like I said, I got this information in an email. It intrigued me and I thought I'd write up about it. If we, it, it can help us when thinking about social justice problems because many are overlapping, creating layers of social justice. Now, all we need to do is go a step further and try to understand the other layers of an individual described above. And if you go on YouTube and put intersectionality, it will come up. If you want to know more about the subject, there's quite a few bits. I mean, I actually saw something. I thought it was a new term, but I actually saw something as far back as 2019 on intersectionality. So it's not, it might um, have just been explained in a way that is more focused or specialised, why it's been brought to the fore now. But hey, I'm here to give you information that you might not come across readily. And I hope I've done that. And I will keep doing that. That's all for now. Bye-bye.